So today, guys, this episode is about the yield its, and this is the 20 ball, and this is a full strip down of the action. Let's get into this. If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, so <clears throat> you may have seen a shorter video of this, Young Bits, with firing pin issues. But we're going to do an action strip down now so that you can actually look at the, the full action. It's a very simple action. Okay, so quick and, easy, quick and dirty way of releasing the firing pins. This safety is a bit stiff, but I think it's my greasy fingers. Hold something onto the breech fence. Snap straight on there, no problem. Okay, good. Cocking pins fly forward. And uh, this is what you see when the hammers are still pressing down, firing pin stays forward on the bottom one, which is why they sometimes catch. Uh, because obviously you need normally would need to, at this point, cock, break the gun and cock the hammers again. So we're just going to release. Just going to release the uh, springs, which shouldn't be too difficult. There you go. Lovely. Fantastic. So this has got a bottom plate that uh, you release with this pin here. And it's probably uh, held by this one too, more than likely. It's spaced around an Italian type action. Uh, yeah, so let's get into that. Like hammers release sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you can just push them straight out, which you can, which then gives these a bit of slack. Very gently lever these out, lift these out. There's a bit of clearance there, not on this one, apparently. That is now loose, and it just wants a little bit of springing out to release that gently. No, nope, not having it. Okay, interesting. That's one of the most common uh, ways of releasing it. Hmm. So with a small pin, ham, uh, drift. Brain's not working today. Does it ever? Still tight. Okay. Clear the pins. I will release these easily. Firing pins. Bottom. Top.
do these to extend as far as we can, give them more space to pry out. It's a spring steel and it will just pop. Just proving a little difficult. Need a better lever. There you go. Not that difficult. Just difficult while trying to do it on camera, that's all. my practice to frequently to put them together like that quite quickly so I can very quickly find out what's what and orientate those like that is that on my camera I can't see yeah so they keep the orientation top bottom left right in that case no problems Right, safety. Just tap out the pin on the safety. Sometimes they push through. No, not happening like, like on this occasion. There it is. Popped out there. So there is a, a pin there that tries to fly out at that point. That's this is very reminiscent of another action. It doesn't can't recall what it is. I've seen a lot of iterations like this. Uh, very rem reminiscent. Ah, silly me. Forgot a step, didn't I? Drop out the trigger guard. Because I'm often trying to do these jobs without dropping out the trigger guard. I forgot that step. So often you try to do the job without... Try to do these jobs without disturbing as much stuff when you're trying to do a quick fix like trigger job or something so now you can see that it's still retained and it needs that undoing and there's the little piston and its spring that keeps the uh, inertia weight where it needs to be this is a cast with inertia weight, so there's less to go wrong. So a little screwdriver, which I can't see. Watchmaker screwdrivers work, but I find that my fat hands don't like the tiny little handles. So I tend to prefer long handled. It's quite a long screw. Oh, that's good.
I'll just to show you that this is nicely made. I like it. Right, so you have a piston, a spring and a little piston that pushes, engages on that little tang there, like so, and that keeps that tension up. Very simple. As you can see, it's nearly done. There's no signs of releasing that, so that is a cast block and it's retained there. Right. We're still on camera, yes. Let's just see how tight this is. Should release with a tap with a piece of brass. Sometimes they don't, and in which case I won't go any further. Now it's freeing up, it's coming. It's almost an interference fit, which makes it a pretty interesting job. So as you can see, that's freeing up now. Nothing to hold that in. There's not enough room for that to, the bolt to drop out yet. So got to con continue. There's a tang there holding it in place. So that's why it's coming out like that. But because it's an aluminium alloy, you cannot just wail on it too much because it will, will mark it up. You just can't keep wailing on it. Because I'm like steel, it will like, like mark, mark. There you go, it's coming through. Very gently. There you go, it's free. Okay. That's the bolt. That's part of the cocking system. And then there'll be the top lever spring. Okay. Very nicely made, well machined. I'm not going to remove this, but that's obviously a hardened steel pin disc uh, inserted there because obviously it will suffer from wear. And there's nothing to report. This is in absolutely great condition. Uh, so it's just light lube and reassemble. But, but you can see that is a complete frame. CNC frame all in one. In fact, you can still see machining marks here, and they've counterboard that there. So, uh, other than that, there will be two hardened steel uh, hinge pins there, which we're not going to interfere with. Thank you very much. Although, delighted to see they've got Allen key hex screws there so you can actually unscrew them and replace them very good design feature uh, very pleased with that this is of the 7000 series i can't remember which it is i think it's 7150 or something like that i'll put it down in the description um which is a very lightweight hard 
hardened aluminium alloy. Works wonderfully, as you can see. Um, absolutely, no, don't fear the aluminium. It's not a problem, not at all. Just gives you a lighter weight gun, that's all. Very handy. So let's put it back together again. I'll just quickly clean everything up as I go. Checking as I go, but everything just looks fine. Very pleased with this. Yeah, and would I have one? Yeah, if somebody, um, if I had one come across, I would certainly shoot it, not a problem. Just checking, is there any dirt or chips or nothing there? No, nothing there. Okay, good. Right, so this is the release catch right there with a little retaining spring. And that allows the top lever to operate. It operates down below like so. And it catches on and catches off. Straightforward, not difficult. Yep, nicely made. I like it a lot. I do like it. So the top lever has all these tunnels in it to allow traversing of the pins and such like. Okay, so that's what indicate index is through to release the bolt. That's the way they work. So that drops in. And that's hardened steel as well, obviously. That drops in there like that. <coughs> Uh, interacting with this here, you can see it's a little bit fiddly to show you all in one go. Okay, that little spring there interacts with that pin there so that you've got forward pressure at all times. There's your uh, little switch that holds the bolt in place or back in and interact with the top lever to make it open or stay stay open. I've just got to very gently ease all this back in without too much messing about. I will do that on my lap because I control the a better control how it goes together. Okay, so I've gently pressed that in with the vise using my lead clams, so there's no marking, and uh, just need to find that pin. I believe it's that one. Just check. Yep. A little bit of tightening to do there, just see how that goes. Checking we're on camera. There we are, lovely, gauged. So that's now operable, as you can see. And when we drop this down, you can see, right, let's see if I can operate that for you. See how neatly that operates. Now the catch is engaged there, which will be to do with this. So there you go. Very nice. There's no pressure on that at the present because it's not pinned, but uh, there we go. That's just least. I think I've gone too far now. <laughs> Need to release that up again. So yeah, it's, it's nicely working. There you go. That'll be in the uh, direction it needs to be held. Very nice. Yeah, nothing wrong with this action. I like it. I like it a lot.
Okay. So that's, uh, obviously needs a bit of lube in there. Just pop some lube in there. So you can, I don't know if I can show you that. Beautifully machined, the way that works. It all interacts together nicely. And would I buy one? Yes, I would. I don't need a gun now, unfortunately. So I won't buy one unnecessarily. Yep, just put some lube on that and then slide that back in. Uh, just as a thought, put a drop of oil, a little bit of grease around that. Not loads, but it's it's where the uh, water ingresses and causes ru rusting. So we'll just give that a little bit of a daub up. And that's fine. Nice. Very good. Right, so that fat pin was the retaining pin that holds holds that in place. And it may be sided. Mm. It's a good fit, that's for sure. You've got to be a lot more gentle with aluminium block, obviously. If it doesn't want to go, don't push it. Right, so that holds all that assembly there together now. Stops it moving around other than where you need it to, so it doesn't fall back out again. That also retains the top lever. Uh, that pops back nicely. There we go. Excellent. Top firing pin. Now, obviously, a lot easier in this method. But it can be done without stripping it, so don't worry about that. But sometimes it's handy just to put a pin in there just to make sure it's aligned. And drop it back in. I'm only going halfway just to catch it. Not liking that. Oh, wrong pin. See that how easy that would be to no no that is quite red. Excuse me, I'm just whittering away. Because it's difficult, too difficult to do, I'm doing it on my lap. Because I need that hand up here in the way. Bear with, I'll be back in a second. And there we go, it's easier once it's in. Because that's on an angle, it's not, it's not evident immediately how you're going with that. So... It looks like the top pin, but it's actually the bottom pin. And it rotates in a different axis. Again, retain it with a drift or something. And then just gently tap that in. Because it's on an angle, it's uh, slightly misleading as to the direction it's requiring. That's just sufficiently retained, but because it's on an angle, that's the thing. You see how easy that is. Lovely. Excellent. Love it. Straightforward. Nice. 
These are hardened, so they won't uh, suffer from wear. All the key parts are hardened steel, so it certainly won't suffer from any uh, corrosion or wear. Oh, this is tight. Yeah, they are tight. Right, okay. Not a lot to see except the back of my hand, I'm sorry. Okay, so I need to... Need five pairs of hands, so I need to get a pin in there to hold that in place, and then I just need to gently ease that through there, ready to hold the next one. I don't even know if I'm catching this on camera, it's a bit tricky to say the least because I need the light in my going into my eyes, not into the camera lens. So I'm trying to, ooh, that doesn't want to play. A lot easier when you're not even looking, when you've not got a camera overlooking the whole proceedings. All right. This is that little dirty little easy trick. You just put a dab of grease there, that'll just hold it enough. And it serves a purpose too. Right. Are we there or thereabouts? Okay, I had to do it on on my knees because it just doesn't. If I if I do the work on my lap, I'm a lot more comfortable. Can control the whole action. So that's now resting in place, and all I've got to do is gently tap that through. And there it is, retained. Lovely jubbly. Right now, the fun bit, only because I've got to get these to locate. Oh, a little bit of grease, not loads, before you go having conniption fits. Just make sure there's enough in there to push that through. There you go. There you go, lovely. Again, small amount of grease. So obviously they sit in like so and engage in the, uh, the hammers, which are here. So obviously I can't locate them straight away. So they need to be sprung into place and uh, this is only really held in by friction really so a little dab of grease not loads There is enough room for all this, it's just I end up being all fingers and thumbs initially. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it, it's just having the fingers and thumbs to do with the job in hand. Okay, so little bit of grease on that and it literally just drops in okay like I say I'll probably obscure the the view 
until you get the parts, which are all greasy, of course, because I've just greased, greased them all. Uh, so hold that back. It's not difficult, it's just not great for camera work, that's all. Get it into that little slot there, gently. It will go. And then all of a sudden, as if by magic, it just pops in there. And you can use that to hold it in place. You align that and you should better just slide it straight in. There you go. Lovely. Now we've got those located nicely. We then simply need to spring these into position and it's just a matter of figuring out which is the easiest position to do that in so i think the simplest way for you guys to do it is to push that pin out roll that back now it's greasy so it's not going to be an easy task and just drop that in there like that so you need about five pairs of hands, obviously, until it's around the location of the light alignment. And then just very lightly lift that in place. I think that should do it. There you go, we're nearly there, nearly there. Okay. Head's getting in the way. Uh, normally I would do this point, this part, on my knees, on my lap, because it's easier for me to have my head over the job. You can see that that's relatively easy to drop in with no tension. Uh, I'm going to do it off, off camera, two seconds. Okay, so I'm trying to do this so that you can see it. Uh, it's just difficult because your fingers and thumbs at this stage. It's it's there or thereabouts. There you go. I think you can just about. Oh right, okay, right. So the pin is it's wiggled back into place into play. So that's why it's playing me up. And then you just simply rotate it round like so. Push it forward a bit. I don't know whether even this is on the camera. It's doing me head in to be honest. I'm not in the mood for camera work today, but I know I needed to do this one because I had customers asking me, can we see the, can we see it? Okay, as by luck would have it in, in view, it just dropped into place. Everything's greasy, it's hard to manipulate. Now that should just slide straight through, which it does, okay? Rinse and repeat. Your mileage may vary. Let's see if I can catch this on camera. I don't know if I will. So you get it into slots there. These are super tight at the moment, which is not great. Right. Let's just see if I can replicate it for you. Keeping that in the slot. See what I'm doing there? Keeping it in the slot there. And just put, rotate that in. Give it a little bit of leverage to get it to pop. It will go, don't worry, it will go. Just gonna keep a bit of pressure on it. This is the low tension method. <laughs> Inverted commas. Ah. Right, okay, so meanwhile that, my fingers pushed that. So I felt it, felt it going right. So I just need a little bit of in, inclination with the, there you go, just to give that encouragement. It won't go in because it's, the pin slid into, into play again. And that becomes a bit of a pain. And then just drop that forward like that. 
and slowly index that back, locate it. not quite aligned so it's there you go then all of a sudden you feel it go and that's it assembled happy days at this point you want to push all that out of the way because we need now need to get the trigger group assembly back in I am I continually banging my head on that camera I am aren't I okay so Fingers and thumbs today's guys, typical. So you've got to get that to locate in there and then screw that in there. Or inside there. Or it should drop through. Yeah, it will. They often do. Frequently difficult to take apart that way. And again, everything's greasy and oily and blah, blah, blah. It's not an excuse, it's just truth. <laughs> so this is an occasion, oops, you'd usually get an apprentice to go, hey, just hold that a second. I could probably put it in a vice for those that feel that that would be a necessary way of doing it. Uh, not so easy to do when you're trying to show somebody with a camera how to do it. I don't know if I'm on camera now, probably not, am I? <clears throat> okay, just so you can see it better. This is the assembly. All right, so that's how it holds together. But I've got a with an, I haven't got a third hand once again. I've got to hold that in place, release that, pop the screw in place, which wants to fall out at all times, and locate it. Okay, good. Now, there's just a chance that may not slide through the frame. They frequently don't. But let's just see how it goes. Okay, so just by popping the screw in and not putting the spring in at this point, so it runs free, there is only just, but will, it is possible to pop that in like so. I could do this in the vise and I think I could prepare something to show you how to do that. But then this is just easier to do. Pop it in like that. But you've got to get that to go back in. And in, in some way, such as this way. Right now, see, it keeps to try to prop out again. So that it's always a bit fiddly. There's probably a factory way to do it, but I'm sure. But all right. So when you've got it like that, slide it through. Slide it through while holding everything together. Okay. And at that point, you're in. But it will try to flip and release. So. Um, what is my favorite, favorite method is to get a bit of wire or a zip tie and hold that in place. Once I've got, once I've got a pin in. All right, so I've got a pin in. Just now you need to reach for a zip tie and hold that in place. That's a trick I use. So with aforementioned zip tie, constantly keeping your finger there, 
just see what I mean. Right. Here you get your zip tie in place, keeping that forward. I'll, oh, got it around the wrong way. Look at that. Such fun. Right. I've used two together because I happen to have some short ones. Right. Bit of sacrificial holding. Right. That just saves me a shed ton of problems. Because that will spring back while you're tapping this in place. Guaranteed. So. Guide that back in. They're more or less there. Lovely. So don't be testing it because it'll fall out. And while you have it retained in such a manner, you then assemble your safety. So you get your little spring in place. You drop your safety bar down. If I can do it on camera. Right, I'll show you. I'll show you. Right, you need to get that through there. But it's always a bit tight. You see, it's in there, but it's just got a... Oh, it's because there's a burr on this, probably. Uh, anyway, there we go. Two seconds, I'll have that done. I don't know whether it's going to be on camera or not. These things end up not on camera. It just gets increasingly fiddlier. Anyway, okay, that's in place or thereabouts. And then you locate it into the top of the inertia block, like so. And then all, all you've got to do, all you've got to do, <laughs> is the easiest bit of all, not. So with your fat fingers and your greasy fingers, you've got to align all of this. And locate that pin into there. So it will look like something like that, I mean, without a bloody great screwdriver sticking in it. I'm going to do that off camera because I know how fiddly that is. And then we'll return.
Right, so there we have it, back together again and ready to go. Just one thing I may not have mentioned is when you uh, push this across, you need to push the top lever assembly spring and assembly and the rod in for it to engage and then you can release it like so and it retains inside very cleverly. But yeah. There you go, guys. Another one done. Till next time. See you soon.